Continuing our discussion of the three basic bench planes, in this video I want to discuss the triplane and the joiner plane. Now, these two planes probably create more confusion than the four plane. Part of the reason for this confusion is that the historical texts that we often refer to don't even use the terms consistently themselves. This can often lead to difficulty determining what the original intent for these planes actually was. In fact, usage of the terms actually evolves over the 200 years that the reference material spans. Going back to Moxon, the earliest English language version that we know of, he has this to say about the joiner plane of the jointer. Its office is to follow the foreplane and to shoot an edge perfectly straight, and not only an edge, but also a board of any thickness, especially when a joint is to be shot. Moxon actually introduces a third plane, the long plane, in his section on house carpentry, and in that section he says this, long plane, the same that joiners call a jointer. Randall Holm describes the long plane and jointer plane similar to Moxon as the same plane, just called different terms by joiners and carpenters, similar to the jack plane and four plane. Holm and Moxon also had this to say about the jointer plane. It is also used to try all sorts of tables, great or small, by planing them traverse, angularly, cornerwise, as well as with the grain, that the workman may be well assured of the flatness and straightness of the work. This is also the first time that we see the word try appear. However, in this case, it's not used to describe a plane, but an action. If you do a little bit of digging into early English language, the term try means to true or straighten or flatten. Jumping ahead about 50 years to 1738, Richard Neve wrote the City and Country Purchasers and Builders Dictionary. In this book, Neve describes the jointer plane and long plane as two distinctly different planes. The long plane, about two foot in length, which smooths the work after the rough stuff is taken off by the foreplane, and prepares the way for the smoothing plane, or if for the edge of a board, the jointer, which is about six inches larger than the long plane, and is so called being set very fine from its being used to make the joints of two boards even and smooth and fit for being glued together. So according to Neve, the long plane is used primarily on wide board faces for smoothing and straightening them after the foreplane, whereas the jointer plane is used primarily on edges, especially for making edge joints. However, at this point, we still haven't heard of a plane called the triplane. So let's jump forward in history a little bit further to 1845 to a book written by Peter Nicholson. In Nicholson's book, he finally describes the triplane. The length of this plane is about 22 inches. Its use is to reduce the ridges made by the jack plane and to straighten the stuff. So Nicholson's triplane sounds an awful lot like what Neve called the long plane. However, Nicholson also describes a plane he calls the long plane. The long plane is used when a piece of stuff is required to be tried up very straight. For this purpose, it is both longer and broader than the trying plane and set with still less iron. The manner of using it is the same. So now per Nicholson's description, the triplane and the long plane are essentially the same plane with the primary difference being the length of the two planes. Nicholson then goes on to describe what he calls the jointer plane. The jointer is still longer than the long plane and is used principally for planing straight edges and the edges of boards so as to make them join together. So Nicholson's jointer plane is really a tool designed just for planing the long narrow edges of boards to make them straight and square in preparation for gluing into an edge joint. Once we get to the 1898, 1914, and 1934 Stanley catalogs, the term triplane is lost again. Stanley refers to both their number seven and their number eight planes as jointer planes, saying, A jointer is a finishing plane for large surfaces and is invariably used to true up the edges of boards so that they can be closely fitted or joined together. So what are we to make of all this? 
Ultimately, I think the distinction between the jointer plane and the triplane is really going to come down to your own personal interpretation. For my own uses, I subscribe to the Neve and Nicholson camp. Specifically, my triplane is used primarily for flattening and smoothing the wide faces of boards after using the foreplane. For this purpose, the blade is sharpened with a camber, as we discussed in the sharpening section, because the plane is used on a surface that is wider than the blade. My jointer plane, on the other hand, is used primarily for straightening and flattening the long, narrow edges of boards in preparation for gluing in an edge joint. So the iron of my jointer plane is sharpened dead straight, just like any other joinery plane. For the most part, that's really the only difference between my triplane and my joiner plane, the way the blade is sharpened. So that might beg the question, do you really need two separate planes? To which I would answer, no. It's absolutely possible to use a single plane as both a triplane and a joiner plane. One way to do that is to have two separate blades. One sharpened with a camber for use on wide surfaces as a triplane, and the other sharpened straight across for use on narrow board edges as a joiner plane. But an even simpler and less expensive solution is to just sharpen the blade straight across and then instead of cambering, just round off the corners to keep them from digging in when the plane is used on a surface that's wider than the blade. This would give you a straight blade for use in planing board edges in preparation for gluing into edge joints, but still allow the plane to be used on wide surfaces without the corners of the blade leaving plane tracks. So there's really no need to have two separate planes. But don't let me stop you from doing so.